Good morning. My name is Bill Kerrigan. I'm a professor of history at Rowan University, an institution that I will discuss a little bit at the end of this lecture. Today, I'm going to be talking about Franklin Roosevelt's statement at the signing of what many people refer to as the GI Bill of Rights, but also known as the Servicemen's Readjustment Act. Uh, many historians, including myself, believe that this is one of the most important acts of legislation ever passed by the United States government. On June 22, 1944, President Franklin Roosevelt signed the Servicemen's Readjustment Act, which provided for key benefits for veterans that were expected to flood back into the United States after the end of World War II. To understand why Congress passed this transformative legislation, we must actually go back to the end of World War I. In the early 1920s, many veterans found themselves struggling to find employment and to adjust to life in the United States. In 1924, Congress had passed a famous bonus bill that agreed to provide funds to veterans based on the days they had served in the war, but the payments were not to begin until 1945. This was, of course, unsatisfactory to many of the veterans, but it became very offensive to them after the onset of the Great Depression in 1929. When 10,000 veterans marched on Washington demanding that the bonuses be paid early, President Herbert Hoover refused them and ordered the military to break up the protest. Franklin Roosevelt, watching this happen, vowed that he would make no such mistake with returning veterans uh, if he were president. Of course, he would become president during World War II. Uh, equally important to the bonus marches, however, was a general feeling uh, during World War II among many ordinary Americans that the Great Depression might very well return after the end of the conflicts in Europe and the Pacific. Even after more than eight years of the New Deal, unemployment remained stubbornly high, around 15% on the eve of the attack on Pearl Harbor on December the 7th, 1941. It was a subsequent massive mobilization of both soldiers and war production factory workers that of course ended unemployment, reducing it almost to zero. Many ordinary Americans worried that the nation's underlying economic problems still existed, and in fact, politicians on both sides of the aisle sensed this concern. A Republican uh, World War I veteran, Harry Comery, actually provided the initial draft of what became the GI Bill of Rights. Roosevelt championed the legislation and it had supporters on, but also opponents in Congress. In fact, it almost died in Congress because of the controversial employment, unemployment provision, uh, which allowed for money for veterans who could not find work after returning from the war. Critics considered this, this provision this, about unemployment to be a radical form of welf welfare that they worry would strip veterans of the desire to even seek employment. Memories of the bonus army, however, and these fears of a return to the Depression proved too much and Congress did, in fact, uh, pass the bill and send it on to Roosevelt to sign. And, of course, the statement uh, that uh, I provided was Roosevelt's uh, given right uh, at that signing. Uh, in later years, it's worth pointing out that critics of the GI Bill would not point uh, at all to the unemployment provision, but instead they would note that even though the legislation uh, did not uh, allow for uh, discrimination, and, uh, in fact, men and women... And people of all backgrounds were uh, supposed to be able to access its benefits, there was a very uneven extension of its provisions due to discrimination uh, at the local level. And in other words, at the level of implementation, uh, things did not, um, uh, were not distributed fairly. For example, many colleges at the time restricted admission to African Americans and female veterans of all backgrounds. Obviously, uh, this was something that uh, was not overcome uh, by the GI Bill. Uh, in addition, bankers and real estate agents prevented many African Americans from being able to take full advantage uh, of the legislation. In the end, the GI Bill of Rights was a massive expansion of veterans' benefits by the federal government. Officials smartly described this expansion as the GI Bill of Rights in order to convey that the federal government had a duty to provide for its veterans, that the bill's provisions were not handouts, but benefits rightly won by brave service. The effort was successful, and the Servicemen's Readjustment Act became one of the most popular and successful of all legislation passed under Franklin Roosevelt. By 1956, the government had provided benefits to 10 million Americans. In 2017, the United States Congress passed the Forever GI Bill, making it clear the enduring impact of this act of Congress passed while the worst war in world history raged. 
Now let me conclude on that personal note that I mentioned at the beginning, and I hope it drives home the transformative nature of this legislation in some ways. My very own institution, I believe uh, that uh, it, this, this act uh, was after maybe the founding of the college itself in 1923, the single most important moment in the history of Rowan University. Uh, in 1944, my institution was known as New Jersey State Teachers College at Glassboro, and it served students interested in working for primary and secondary schools uh, in the region. It was only after the GI Bill when enrollment began to sharply increase, thanks to all these local veterans who now had the ability to go uh, possibly to college. The curriculum expanded at the same time, in fact because of their demands for it, and the name eventually changed to Glassboro State College. Without the GI Bill, there is no doubt in my mind that the other two moments that people would say are really important in my university history would have ever happened. The first of these uh, is the decision by the U.S. President Lyndon Johnson and the Soviet Premier Alexei Kosygin to hold their summit on our campus in 1967. And then the other decision, uh, which many people are familiar with because it's more recent, was the decision of a Massachusetts Institute Technology graduate uh, and uh, industrialist Henry Rowan to donate $100 million dollars uh, to the college in the 1990s. That act has, of course, uh, led to massive changes in Rowan in recent times. We changed our name, of course, to Rowan University, although he did not ask for that, actually. Uh, and it's led to con continued tremendous uh, expansion. When I first arrived in the late 1990s, the university enrolled some 9,000 students. That's way up from 170, which it had dropped to in 1943 during the war. Uh, but now the university has over 20,000 students and two medical schools. But in my opinion, none of this would have been possible. Uh, Henry Rowan would not have given us the money, uh, all that, without the GI Bill of Rights. It democratized higher education in general, and it certainly transformed Rowan University. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.